Hello students, welcome to the theory class of principles of plant breathing. Today we will discuss on breathing method part 8. So in this we are going to discuss about the special breathing methods although we have covered some of the special breathing methods which are mutation breathing and polyploidy breathing and which, which can be applicable to all the three types of crop plants. Okay, and in this section also we are going to cover some of the breathing methods which are common for all, all the three types of crop plants which are self, cross and asexual propagated crop plants. In this we are going to cover uh, transgenic breeding, uh, somatic hybridization and uh, say genome mapping and genome sequencing and such and such okay which are all biotechnological approaches okay. So first of all let's see what is a transgenic breeding okay. So it is a transfer of a gene which is called usually called as transgene. Uh, usually a foreign gene into a host plant okay where the the breeder wants to improve okay say for example uh, when you consider a purple colored rose okay purple colored rose is not existing or is not existed in the natural uh, germplasm okay so whenever a plant breeder gives to breed uh, plant breeder intends to breed or intends to produce a purple colored rose it's not available in the germplasm of rose so he has to find the red colored genes or uh, purple colored genes from some other flowers and introduce it to the host gene which is rose okay so uh, the, there may be demand the there may be demand of purple rose in the flower okay in market or and so okay breeding of new kinds of crop plants uh, from the gene that is introduced from foreign gene okay so the foreign gene which is introduced into the host plant is called transgene transgenesis is the process of introduction of the transgene or the the foreign dna into the host plant okay or the host organism and transgenic plant is the product of transgenic breeding okay which is the host plant which is finally uh, integrated with the integrated with the foreign DNA and which is enabled to express the foreign gene okay so let's go into the history a brief history regarding the transgenic breeding okay so in 19 it all started in 1982 when uh, the first transgenic plant was produced against a TMB uh, tobacco plant which is against TMB virus okay and in 1940 1984 the first successful plant genetic engineering experiment was uh, conducted using cauliflower mosaic virus okay and in 1994 we have the first genetically modified crop approved by uh, approved for sale in US uh, which is known as flower shaver tomato so in this case flower shaver tomato is most frequently asked in competitive exams and you also have to make uh, the clear-cut differences between the first transgenic plant and the first transgenic plant or first genetically modified plant which is released which has been released as in commercial scale okay when it comes to commercial scale it is in 1994 flavor shaver tomato okay while it is in 1982 it is the uh, first TMB resistant tobacco which is not commercially released okay and in 1995 we have the first pesticide producing crop BT potato which was approved by US environment protection for release okay first GMO crop which is which is used as uh, pesticide which is against the pesticide resistance okay and the next thing is uh, 1996 first genetically modified flower called moon dust which is bluish colored carnation was introduced using transgenic technology okay and then in 2000 we have golden rice which is very popular and very important for competitive exams with beta carotene developed with uh, increased nutrient value what is the increase in, uh, nutrient value the beta carotene when consumed gets converted into vitamin a in the body okay and in 2013 uh, there is the first genetically engineered crop developed by Fraley, okay, and Montego, Chilon, Chilton, which was awarded with World Food Prize, okay. 
And coming to the very important question here, why transgenic plants? Why do we need transgenic plants? Because apart from the genetic variation which is existing in the environment or in the germplasm, so we need an extra gene when the plant breeder needs an extra gene or plant breeder need, intends to breed new kinds of crop plants. Okay, so for example, improvement in nutritional quality. Example would be. Um, golden rice improvement of vitamin A content in rice and introduction of herbicide resistance. What is herbicide resistance? A gene is introduced into the plant which is uh, which on inter upon introduction of it the plants get resistant to the particular type of uh, insect uh, herbicide. Okay, So it is particularly used in uh, precision farming where the clean crop approach is quite necessary okay in herbicide resistant plants you can instead of uh, weeding for longer period of time or is for uh, successive times okay so we are going to spray the uh, herbicide in a large scale okay when there is commercial production of fruits or foods okay so food greens so we are going to the in, the herbicide will have an effect on the wheat crops while the the herbicide resistant plants won't have any effect so it, there will be a clean crop approach okay where you can use in precision farming and so okay and insecticide resistance also so in this case uh, where crop plants such as cotton where insect insect incidence is quite high you can use insecticide resistant you can induce pesticide resistant plant and spray of uh, pesticide against the, on the uh, on the crop plant and uh, have a residual less residual effect on the uh, crop plants okay and effect of insecticides only on the insects okay next thing is biotic stresses Okay, resistance to biotic stresses and abiotic stresses. Okay, so coming to the example, you can we can cite here Bt cotton. So in case of Bt cotton, what we have, uh, res chrysin is introduced into a individual host where the individual becomes resistance against the, uh, the pest. Okay, and same case in case of biotic stresses. Okay, resistance against or uh, tolerance against the various biotic stresses such as drought flood so and so enhance shelf life okay if uh, if a crop plant after harvesting can stay for uh, one month instead of one week that would increase the uh, the economic value of the crop plant definitely because the the farmer can sell the the fruit or the the food longer period of time okay this usually happens this is usually necessary in case of in case of fruits or which ripe which ripes in shorter period of time okay or vegetable fruits which ripens in short period of time okay and which has less keeping quality and next thing is industrial product okay bioproducts or secondary metabolites which are produced which are produced from the uh, plants or animals can be utilized as pharmaceuticals and vaccines and coming to the techniques and methods of production of transgenic plant we have here okay uh, indirect method which is agrobacterium mediated gene transfer method written in red color and direct method which are physical method and chemical methods okay so various methods are listed here and in case of agrobacterium agrobacterium mediated method this is most commonly used uh, method of gene transfer with the use of gram negative bacterium called agrobacterium uh, we, we transfer uh, the gene from the foreign uh, source into with the use of a vector which is a mediator uh, to transfer to host or to harbor that gene and that uh, that foreign DNA into its plasmid and then integrate its its use its vectors use is to integrate the whole gene into the host uh, host genome okay so later on the host genome will express the gene the foreign gene 
uh, with the with the help of uh, vector DNA okay integration of after the vector DNA okay so this so can also be achieved by various physical methods direct methods gene gun method electroporation method microprojectile method micro injection liposome okay and chemical method we have of uh, polyethylene glycol method and, and so on okay and coming to applications okay so applications the various applications can be listed into four broad categories first one is resistance to biotic stresses so which can be against insect resistance virus resistance and fungal uh, fungal and bacterial resistance second thing is resistance against the uh, abiotic resistance you say for example herbicide resistance or glyphosate resistance and third thing is improvement of crop yield and quality okay extended self life of fruits say for example flavor sugar tomato improved nutrition golden rice example improved colorations in color in cabbage okay more purple coloration in cabbage and multicolor in cauliflower and production of low cost pharmaceuticals edible vaccines and essential proteins okay so these are broad uh, objectives or you can say applications of uh, transgenic breeding okay so what is insect resistance plants okay <coughs> so the, the the total amount of losses due to insect pests is 15 percent or as an as an overall okay uh, data of yield and production of the world worldwide so this 15 percent of yield is uh, either uh, can be curved down either by use of uh, you can say uh, insecticides pesticides but the best thing is to breed a plant which is resistant against the pest okay so there won't be extra cause of pest use pesticide use or you can say less cost due to the operation okay uh, and then the less cost due to the residual effect of the insecticide use okay less so these these advantages are there for insect resistant plants so what is this so bacillus uh, so in this case we are using bacillus thuringiensis as an example uh, in this uh, this is a gram negative soil bacterium which which has uh, bt genes called cry genes okay uh, though cry genes can be broadly classified into four different types which its effect its effect depends on the type of cry gene which is uh, which is there okay say for example cry 1 gene is a category of cry gene which can kill both uh, butterflies and moths okay which is which are lepidopterans and cry 2 genes which are a class of cry genes which kills both uh, lepidopterans and dipterans butterflies and flies and cry 3 kills beetles which are coleopterans and cry 4 class kills uh, only flies dipterans okay so these are some categories of cry genes which is extracted from P bacillus thuringiensis and which was discovered by uh, japanese ishiwaki in 1901 okay so remember this also this is important for your competitive point of view and and the classes of cry genes which is extracted from which is from bt uh, bacillum bac uh, bacterium okay and coming to the action of bt toxin this is usually in case of bt gene which is introduced in bt cotton okay what we commonly use in india the only transgenic crop which is uh, used in india for mass production of cotton so in this um, the the cry gene is cry 1 ac gene the mode of action is the when the 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 crystal the protein is ingested by the larvae okay have, which is produced by the cry uh, cry gene is when ingested it will uh, start its action when the ph uh, ph is high okay which is ph is alkaline okay so what will happen when the ph is alkaline it it activates the protoxin okay 
and the protease gene which is uh, there will activate the toxin and which upon binding with the receptor will form pores into the uh, cell okay and into the body of the larvae okay so this after this various pore porations into the body so the insect will freeze and it will die eventually <coughs> so remember one thing that uh, the insect the the bt gene or bt metabolism will work only in uh, alkaline ph and it won't work in acidic ph which is usually the ph in the human gut okay so this is considered as safe when it comes to human health coming to the next slide we have herbicide resistance okay although weeds as we all know are unwanted and they are useless to plants okay so our main intention is to remove the weeds so we use herbicides so taking glyphosate as an example we'll discuss here the the cycle of uh, the weed action glyphosate action okay so in this the shikimate is converted into enol pyruvyl shikimate triphosphate with eps ps okay so uh, which converts into tryptophan tyrosine and phenylalanine later on okay so in this case glyphosate competes with the phosphoenol pyruvate and which disturbs the action of uh, eps ps okay so what will uh, we do here the glyphosate resistant EPSPS gene is introduced into this uh, genome of the plant which enhances in such a way that there is mutated EPSPS here which doesn't allow or which blocks the glyphosate activity okay so there won't be any uh, competition between the glyphosate and phosphoenol pyruvate and its activity will be there and normal activity will be there and thus production of tryptophan tyrosine and phenylalanine so on okay <clears throat> as you can see here when the gene is introduced the normal activity uh, the amino acid is produced okay these amino acids are produced here and then when spray with glyphosate okay if you see the the endogenous EPFC is in inhibited by the herbicide plants begin to die for uh, those crop plants where there is no transient introduced okay glyphosate resistant introduced okay and when there is glyphosate resistant gene EPSPS gene is introduced and there is no uh, death of the plant as the normal amino acid is still produced here okay and and may which main uh, consequence is due to the blockage of glyphosate activity okay coming to the next slide we have uh, so in case of herbicide resistant plants you can see uh, the clean crop approach or you can see precision farming or you can use this in precision farming by spraying the insect uh, the herbicide in a large scale instead of uh, mismanagement or you can see uh, dirty crop approach in farming okay coming to the next slide we have here golden rice okay uh, so this is very important when it comes to your competitive exam points of view so uh, this may come at any uh, general agriculture questions or any biotechnological questions okay and uh, <coughs> so the golden rice was introduced or what was developed by Ingo Potricus and Peter Baer Ingo, Ingo Potricus is from Germany and Peter Baer is from England okay so they both uh, developed golden rice by transferring by, by introgression of PSY photo photoin synthase gene from daffodil okay and another gene CRTL phytoin this series gene from soil bacterium called Irvenia uridivora okay and the next thing is golden rice too okay because of uh, insufficiency in vitamin A contained in golden rice 1 there is again enhancement of vitamin A content or you can say beta carotene content in rice by introducing phytoin synthesis gene PSY gene from maize instead of daffodil in case of uh, golden rice 1 and carotene desaturase gene CRTL gene from urina irutivora okay which is same as the golden rice 1 so <coughs> so golden rice is 
a uh, type of rice that accumulates beta carotene in rice grains when the beta carotene is consumed and it's get, it gets converted into vitamin A which is which is useful for our human health okay next thing is a flavor shaver tomato which is quite popular and because of its uh, first uh, crop plant uh, which is commercially released in US and uh, coming to the type of uh, technology which is which is used to develop this it is called antisense RNA technology why antisense RNA technology when the normal tomato is uh, is harvested so the gene inside gets uh, transcribed in transcribed into the normal mRNA which is called sense mRNA the sense DNA will convert into sense mRNA and it will produce a uh, uh, protein called polygalacturonase okay so this protein is vital for ripening of the tomato okay so when we think about how to reduce or reduce the time uh, the the speed of ripening so it is to reduce the production of pro pro protein called polygalacturonase how to overcome it by uh, by uh, production of uh, by uh, using antisense mRNA okay uh, which fuses with the M sense mRNA and produce antisense mRNA is the uh, complementary sequence which can bind with the uh, sense mRNA okay so it can bind with the complementary uh, M sense mRNA and form a, dupl a duplex instead of the single mRNA okay so when the sense mRNA is not available for translation okay so the process of formation of if you remember the process of formation of protein from the mRNA is called translation process so if the sense mRNA is uh, attached or bind to the antisense mRNA okay which is complementary to sense mRNA it will form a duplex okay just like that of DNA okay and it won't the sense mRNA won't be able to uh, won't be available for production of uh, polygalacturonase gene so that's why the, there will be stagnation or there will be reduced or there will be no ripening okay because based on that uh, <coughs> level of uh, the level of gene has been silenced for ripening polygalacturonase production okay and in the the technology is also called as gene silencing next thing is production of uh, gene uh, production of tearless onion using gene silencing technology again so in this the gene which is responsible for production of organosulfur compounds such as profane ethyl uh, as oxide okay ch uh, c3h 6 OS, OS is uh, is uh, uh, suppressed and <coughs> which is uh, not which is responsible for production of tears into our eyes whenever it is exposed into the uh, in and around our uh, naked eye okay and next thing is a colorful cauliflower okay we can induce genes into the cauliflower okay which is naturally not present into the germplasm okay which is not naturally available so it can be introduced the flower color or you can say the color of cauliflower can be introduced from the flower color of other crop plants such as purple coloration in beans some beans and some flowers okay and purple tomatoes okay uh, purple tomatoes are most usually uh, consumed and it is taken up as market attract attraction in some uh, developed countries usually because of its richness is in anthocyanin content apart from vitamin C content in tomato and and gene has been introduced from other crop plants okay with uh, purple colorations okay anthocyanin productions and in case of purple rose also the rose color which is not available in nature in the germplasm of rose is introduced with the gene of other flowers such as beans okay and coming to the next thing next technology uh, from biotechnology is somatic hybridization it is the in vitro fusion it is the biotechnological fusion or you can say tissue culture fusion of isolated protoplast to form a hybrid cell and, and its subsequent development into a hybrid plant okay what we usually do in plant breeding in conventional plant breeding is hybridize between two different plants formation of zygote formation of uh, male and female gamete 
form a fusion formation of zygote and development into a whole new plant but in case of plant tissue culture we can uh, fuse two cells okay or two protoplast i must say which are uh, cells lacking a cell wall okay when the, they are fused either it, which can be achievable either by spontaneous or with the use of chemicals such as polyethylene glycol uh, so when they are fused uh, the there will be presence of uh, the cytoplasm will make, get mixed up and there will be presence of both the uh, nuclear part of fusions of both this nucleus from both the parents okay and it will produce somatic hybrid so uh, <clears throat> this is important when uh, you are when we want to transfer cytoplasmic genes okay the genes from the female parent say for example male sterility which is cytoplasmic uh, gene can be transferred using somatic hybridization from and 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 one special um, <coughs> thing about this somatic hybridization is it is there is no barrier okay there is uh, less barrier in uh, hybridization so you can hybridize between white species or white genera okay two different genera of crop plants but not uh, between animal and plants okay you have you, have, you can hybridize between two different genera of plants because we are reduced the hybridization is reduced at the cell level okay so three different steps are there first fusion of the protoplast using either polyethylene glycol or it may be achievable with spontaneous fusion and selection of hybrid cells okay selection of hybrid cells from the fused cells we are going to 20 uh, out, out of the total uh, protoplast that is allowed to fuse only 20 to 25 percent is fused okay and the chances of fusion is 20 to 25 percent and the few cells are going to be selected and and we are going to select hybrid cells out of it identification of the hybrid finally in the plant okay morphological basis when it comes to the phenotype okay so we are going to measure the different height of the plant uh, the two two parents and the hybrid plants whether there is a <coughs> the presence of uh, the 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 genes from all, both the parents okay and the next thing is hybrids it's almost similar to uh, somatic hybridization the only difference is in case of hybrids there will be uh, retention of only one nucleus nucleus from only one of the parent and cytoplasm from both the parents okay in the cytoplasmic hybrids uh, where the nucleus is derived from only one parent and the cytoplasm is derived from both the parents uh, are referred to as hybrids cytoplasm is as you can see here the when, when there is a fusion of both this type of um, cell protoplast okay so heterokaryon this is your uh, what you call somatic hybrid okay somatic hybrid where presence of both the nucleus of both the parent is called heterokaryon and if there is eventual de degeneration of one of the nucleus it will convert into hybrid okay and the process is known as hybridization the next thing is application of hybrids okay hybrids uh, has wonderful applications when it comes to uh, improvement or transfer of CMS cytoplasmic male sterility which is known to be um, known to be governed by genes present in cytoplasm like uh, chloroplast and mitochondria antibiotic and herbicide resistance which are also present in cytoplasm and and it is successfully reported in transfer of CMS in rice uh, hybrids of uh, Rafano brassica that contains nucleus of Rafano brassica napas has also been reported and and various other examples are also there okay next coming to the next technology which is marker assisted selection which is also you can call it as marker assisted breathing okay although we have already studied about marker assisted breathing <coughs> let's see in f2 generations what we usually do in f2 generations large f2 generations or uh, in further segregating generations we select plants which are having both the uh, gene both the uh, poly polymorphic uh, <coughs> polymorphic uh, markers from both the parents okay so these polymorphic markers are closely associated with the, the susceptible uh, susceptible line and resistant line is associated here so whenever we have to select 
a particular plant from the gel picture we are going to select those individuals which are resistant based on the resistant type okay as you can see here uh, resistant we, we we are we want to select resistant plant so that's why the genes the individual showing the bands on the lower side of the gel pick will be selected okay <coughs> the next thing is omics technology which is uh, a buzz um, term or you can say the technology which is going on right right now okay which is currently going on right now this includes genomics transcriptomics proteomics metabolomics okay so <coughs> So what is genome? Uh, what is genomics? It is the study of structural and functions, structures and functions of whole genome. So suppose this is rice genome. Genome is what for? Uh, genome is the whole chromosomal set of a haploid individual. Okay. So this so can be re uh, then this so can be repeated in case of diploid in twice. In case of triploid, it will be thrice. But uh, there won't be change unless and until there is chromosomal aberrations or numerical chromosomal aberrations okay so <clears throat> uh, so finding out the different uh, nucleotide present in the genes all the genes present in it and the distances uh, and the information all the information about the genes present in the the genome is uh, is quite important it is called as genomics okay and transcriptomics is what it is the all the possible type of mRNAs which is which can be produced by all the genes from this genome it is called transcriptomics okay and proteomics is all the possible type of proteins that is produced that is produced by the uh, all the genes or all the QTLs present in the uh, all the genes okay uh, in all the uh, chromosomes of the genome okay then metabolomics then metabolomics it is the all the metabolites in a specific biological sample okay same thing and <coughs> next thing is as stated quite clearly by th Roderick, it is the, the genomics is the mapping and sequencing of to analyze the structure and organization of genome okay mapping means to find out uh, a particular loci of uh, uh, character governed by it suppose when you find a specific character say for example uh, purple color of rose okay so when you particularly find that peculiar variety peculiar variation so you need to find out where the gene is located into the whole rice genome okay into the whole large chunk of rice genome that is called mapping okay mapping means to find out the location of the gene of that particular character okay next thing is sequencing sequencing is the uh, finding out all the nucleotide sequence of the uh, of the chromosome of the uh, all all the genes present in the uh, genome okay <coughs> so these two things are main ingredients of genomics and when it comes to gene sequencing the finding out the all, all the nucleotide sequence of okay, atgc sequence and the first generation started in you know, with the use of uh, Sanger sequencing Maxim and Gilbert sequencing which is outdated actually and next thing is next generation sequencing uh, which is used in some labor laboratories which is, which are uh, 454 uh, next gen next gen sequence Solexa sequence ion tolerant in Illumina which is quite popularly used nowadays and third generation third generation gene sequencing technologies which are PAC bio oxford nanopore which are quite advanced and used in some labs coming to the next slide we have uh, this is the end of the slide and if you have any questions then you can ask